Hey guys, hope you're doing all right. In today's video, I'm going to cover my first full-time software engineering job. It was right out of college, and the reason why I'm doing this now is because I recently have switched teams away from that original role. So I figured now would be a good time, while it's relatively top of mind, uh, to cover how I got the first job, what it was like, what were the pros and cons of that role, as well as why I decided that it was a good time to switch when I decided to switch. I'll go ahead and jump right into it. So the official job title is called CIO Software Developer. I know that's pretty broad. I wish there was an official job rec or job description that I could share with you, but unfortunately there is not one because I was an intern conversion, so there never was an external job rec. Basically, all I had to do was uh, I kind of got in talks with my manager and suggested that I wanted to work full time. And this is while I was an intern. And then he basically agreed that he could make it happen. And then he got in touch with HR to send over a formal offer letter. And then from there, I pretty much just accepted it. And that was my job search. So as you know, in my Elite Code video, basically, I didn't have much of a job search because I placed a pretty heavy bet on being able to get a return a return offer from IBM. I will say I was sweating a little bit because I didn't actually get the return offer from IBM until around November and um, my internship that summer ended in late August so I was like oh I really might have to start like looking for a job pretty pretty hard pretty soon. Um, I did apply to other places of course but once I kind of got the IBM offer I could tell that it was coming, I wasn't too worried. It was a pretty competitive offer, I guess, for the Raleigh area. It was like 88 base and then like 10 sign-on bonus. And then I did end up interviewing elsewhere and being able to negotiate the salary up a little bit. So all things considered, it was a very, very smooth and relatively, easily, relatively easy um, process to actually get the full-time job. And now I'll kind of cover like what the actual team was, what it was like, and what I was working on. Something that I should note is that I did indicate to my manager prior to him extending the offer to me was that I was willing to work part-time during the spring 2020 semester before joining full-time uh, in May 2020. So basically what that entailed was me working around 15 to 20 hours a week during my final semester in undergrad and then when that you know full-time start date kicked in, there was essentially no difference to the rest of the team, or me really, other than all of a sudden I get paid like a full-time salary, which is you know way more than double my hourly wage that I was getting as an intern, and that I would be working you know full-time hours. Obviously, I'll probably make a separate video about what my intern experience was like, um, but let's go ahead and get into like what my full-time team was, what the role was, um, and how I liked it. Alright, so to cover what I actually did, I am going to be using my LinkedIn as talking points just to help me remember and make sure I don't miss anything, so that's why I'm going to be looking down for some parts of this video. But I was a full stack developer and the current projects that I worked on were migrating applications from a private cloud environment to IBM's internal hybrid cloud environment, which was powered by Red Hat's OpenShift container platform, and that involved like containerizing those applications and migrating data and whatnot to these hybrid cloud environments. Um, and then in terms of development work, I developed a couple of full stack node JS applications that were deployed on that platform. So that was using Express.js to write APIs to interact with DB2 on cloud. Managing the DevOps lifecycle, so that was essentially just setting up the CI CD pipelines, um, and then on the front end, creating Vue.js front ends. Um, so that about summarizes what I did from a technical standpoint as a software engineer on that team. Um, the most important thing to note is that it was a very small team. So there were only six people on the team, and I was the only full time developer for around half of my time. Like when I first joined, I was the only one. 
and then later um starting in february or maybe january of 2021 another full stack full-time developer joined which was awesome and that really improved the experience quite a lot because that new grad hire was my age um cool guy too but anyways so going into what the team dynamic was really really awesome team i interned with them like personally i liked all of them i mean i still like them i don't know why i use the past tense but um something important to note was that it's not a development team so there's pros and cons to that the biggest pro is that you have a lot of responsibility i mean I, that could also be a con i guess depending on what you like but you have a lot of responsibility and you have a lot of visibility but also because of that you are responsible for pretty much every aspect of the application um, what I just mentioned in terms of like the description of what I did that's basically like an end-to-end -end process and on a bigger team there would be you know front-end developers back-end developers DevOps engineers um, and with the small team you also get pulled into a lot of meetings because you don't have a separate business side to bring you the requirements you're kind of like working with stakeholders and also being the ones that implement it so those are the pros and cons. I really liked the people on the team. I liked that I got exposed to end-to-end, -end, like the truly the full stack, um, as well as deploying it myself. But these are pretty small applications, I would say. They served around 2,000 people at their peak, um, which is, in the grand scheme of things, not that much. Um, they're all like applications that are hosted in one repository, so there's no microservices. It's kind of like a monolithic architecture, but they are small apps, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that per se. Um, but I think that's the biggest reason why I wanted to leave was just because I wanted to get the experience working on a truly like enterprise-wide, large-scale environment that's distributed, ideally with like a microservices architecture. Um, and that's, that's what I got with this new team. Um, another thing to note is that Working on a small team, you have a really, really high visibility and you can claim responsibility for things that are hopefully successful. Like in my case, I think that did help with me, you know, switching teams in future because I got to say, hey, you know, like I created these applications from scratch. They worked um, and I was essentially the only one that made them. So, you know, who else is there to attribute that success to? So definitely some pros there, but as for cons, like, as you'd imagine, one developer, there's only so much you can do. Um, I didn't re really get to see what it was like developing and deploying applications at scale. Like, I never had to worry about releases, um, code practices. Like, I like to think that I have good code practices, but with only two full-time developers, we were definitely just kind of like, you know, like, is it cool if I work on the branch right now? Or like, I'll do this or something, you know, it wasn't a formal process. so. I think going forward, I'm really looking forward to kind of learning more about how to develop and deploy large scale applications, what that process is like and whatnot. Um, I did a year and a half or so on that team and then I kind of just decided it was time to switch it up. Um, and then obviously it wasn't too hard. I think I've mentioned in the past that it's not very hard to do an internal transfer um, once you kind of have some sort of reputation or things that you can point to that were successful so in my case that certainly wasn't a problem and then i had an internal transfer that went through relatively quickly and i've now been at my new role for around a month um, as i settle more into that i'll make a video on that but i hope that was kind of interesting and had some insights into what i did for my first job